takes uh, forever to grant, uh, to decide on a patent application. It's the, uh, the main problem used to be in the pharmaceutical cases. Nowadays, it's basically uh, widespread in basically any technical area. Uh, a patent applications may take more than 10 years to be decided by the Brazilian PTO, but there is a compensation. Our last bullet in these slides, there is this Article 40 of the Brazilian IP law that says that the patent in Brazil will have uh, 10 years from filing or 10 years from grant, whichever expires later. That leads to the fact that uh, the, the majority, I wouldn't say the vast majority, but the majority of uh, patents being granted right now in Brazil, they have a term of 10 years from grants. Depending on the technical area, if it is a regulated sector wherein before launching your product, you have to perform a number of tests, a number of clinical tests, a number of environmental tests in the case of uh, agrochemicals, it may not be a bad situation. I mean, having in Brazil, maybe an important market, a patent that has a term of 10 years from grants. In a number of cases, a number of important products, the loss of exclusivity worldwide is year X, and in Brazil is year X plus three, sometimes plus four. I'm, what I'm trying to say is depending on the area, I mean, uh, some of my clients, I have to admit, they are quite happy with this situation in Brazil. Some of them even asked me to delay even more the patent prosecution, but I say that's not possible. It's, uh, it's delayed uh, already uh, too much. And there is the possibility of fast tracking, of expediting the patent the, the examination in Brazil if there is a potential infringer, not a real infringer, but a potential infringer. In this case, you, you have just to send a warning letter. Warning letters are very common in Brazil. No problems about that. So a half-page warning letter, and with this you file a request to the Brazilian PTO to expedite uh, the examination of the patent application. So instead of uh, 10 years, you may have uh, your decision on the patent application in within, say, one year. Okay? Uh, a situation that, uh, to, my, to my knowledge, is unique to Brazil. For pharmaceutical patent applications, okay, we have a visa in this scenario. A visa is the Brazilian regulatory agency. Okay, they grant the market approvals for agrochemicals, for medical devices, and for pharmaceuticals. And since December 1999, they also have a say on, uh, on the examination of patent, pharmaceutical patent applications. This came out of the current law, dates from 1996, and uh, uh, this, this change in the law came out, uh, out of the blue, and we were very surprised by this introduction of Anvisa basically as a patent examining body. So the situation making a very long story short, the situation right now in Brazil is that in a number of cases, in, I would say, the, mo uh, the, the majority of the pharmaceutical patent applications, Anvisa will perf perform the substantive examination before the Brazilian PTO. The case will be filed before the Brazilian PTO, but Brazilian PTO, when the examination starts, it will send to Anvisa. Anvisa, in most of the cases, will perform a substantive examination, prior art search, and a check novelty, inventive step, and if uh, the case is allowable, the case will be sent back to the Brazilian PTO for another substantive examination. So uh, the, uh, apparently there was this idea by the government to have uh, maybe some sort of a power on the granting of pharmaceutical patent applications. Uh, I don't really see a real rationale on all this, but the fact is that uh, for pharmaceutical patent applications, we have not only one, but two exam but, uh, examining bodies. Uh, the good news is that uh, in uh, my last statistics says that uh, in 84% uh, of the cases on visa grants, uh, their, their approval to pharmaceutical patent applications, and only 16% they deny it. And even if they deny, it is possible and uh, the case in, in many situations, to file a lawsuit 
against some visa, but at the federal courts uh, in, in, in Brasilia or in Rio de Janeiro, uh, those are the most common venues. And uh, there are not, again, no problem against that. It's very common to sue uh, governmental agencies in Brazil. And uh, uh, in terms of case law, the majority of the cases, almost all of the cases, are being decided against a visa. So the Brazilian courts are understanding that a visa would have only a, a say, a, a, an opinion to be given in case of public health issues, not substantive examination of patent applications. Okay? In terms of patent litigation, uh, in Brazil we have this dual or bifurcated system uh, for infringement of IP rights, you have to file the lawsuit before the sta any state court. There are 27 states in Brazil, and you have to select the venue. I'll talk about this uh, later. Uh, but the, the infringement will, will run before a state court. In terms of uh, IP validity and discussion uh, of a uh, possible revocation of a patent or a trademark registration, this discussion is before a federal court. Why is that? Because the Brazilian PTO must be a co-defendant. So if you have a governmental agency as a defendant in any lawsuit, you have to go to a federal court. Uh, venue. Uh, this is important in Brazil. Brazil is a big country, so you have to select, uh, I mean, you have to be careful about selecting where you are litigating because uh, uh, things may get complicated, even in terms of logistics. So in general, the, the, the general uh, rule, the general civil procedure rule is that I have to file at the seat of the defendant. But if the infringement is already taking place, you can file the, the lawsuit anywhere where inf the infringement is really uh, occurring. So in case of a, a sale, for example, of a drug, pharmaceutical drug, it, in general, it is when it starts to be sold, it's, uh, it, it's sold uh, anywhere in Brazil, so you can uh, file anywhere. But in general, a number of the, those lawsuits are filed before the Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo is the biggest uh, city in Brazil at the Sao Paulo State Court and quite close to my office, so it's very convenient for me. And, uh, and, uh, and there is no special grudge uh, of those judges against patents, or against uh, uh, foreign patents, nothing like that. So uh, it's, a, it's a good day to have your fair day in court. Um, uh, there are no spe IP specialized courts in Brazil, except in Rio de Janeiro, federal and state. Uh, and in Sao Paulo, but only at appeal level. And uh, sometimes my clients say, how you explain a, a complex uh, patent case to a judge that has no, has no uh, technical background? Well, that's my job, to try to, to, to make things understandable, even to a, to a lay person. And in any case, uh, the judge will designate, he, he uh, uh, or her will designate a technical expert of their trust, of their confidence to act as an advisor. Ah, one important consideration, IP infringement in Brazil is both a crime and a tort. No one goes to jail. Maybe some uh, community service, painting a wall or, or cleaning <laughs> one street. But uh, uh, in patents, it's really rare to see a criminal infringement lawsuit but it may come very handy to get your evidences. There is a specific provision of the penal procedural code, the criminal procedural code in Brazil that provides for a criminal search and seizure. And this criminal search and seizure is just to collect evidences of a possible crime, in this case, patent infringement. So, for example, the, the, the infringing product is not yet in the market, but you know that they are in the warehouses of your competitors. You may file, you may request a criminal search and seizure. In spite of the scary name, actually it is only to collect a few samples of the products and examination, tax and examination, again, by a technical expert designated by the judge will be performed and there will be an opinion whether there is an infringement or not of the patent. With this opinion, you can file a civil lawsuit seeking a preliminary injunction. Very few times in, in my professional life I saw, I saw 
a, a, an infringement lawsuit in Brazil that has no preliminary injunction request. Almost all of them will have it. And uh, they, in statistical terms, uh, the Brazilian judges are somewhat willing to grant uh, those preliminary injunctions, forbidding the sale of, uh, of the infringing products right away before, uh, uh, before further studies in the, 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 the criminal, the, the civil lawsuits per se. I drafted one day this graphic. I like graphics. So uh, basically, you have three instances in Brazil, trial level, appeal level, superior, OK? Uh, it, will, it may start with a discussion about venue, not really common. It goes to the trial level, OK? A and there will be a decision on the preliminary injunction. That's a specific situation of Brazil. We love appeals. Everybody has the right to appeal, and we also like interlocutory appeals. It's provided for in the procedural codes. So uh, depending on the decision on the preliminary injunction, there will be an interlocutory appeal, so it goes to the second level, to the appeal level, uh, 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 by the losing party, someone that uh, whether the, the, the preliminary injunction has been denied or has been granted. After there is a decision on a preliminary injunction, the case goes back to the trial level, and then there will be a designation of the technical expert. Sometimes there is a discussion about the specific technical expert that has to act in a given case. Sometimes there is discussion about the qualifications, about the technical expert. I've seen pharmaceutical cases where civil engineers were designated as, as technical experts. So again, there may be on the decision by the trial judge, another interlocutory appeal, to, uh, so that the, the, the appeal justices can decide on the name of the technical expert. Back to trial level, technical uh, phase done, uh, maybe depending on the technical expert decision, another request for a preliminary injunction, and finally the sen sentence when the case goes to appeal any decision on the appeal level is appealable to the superior court. Uh, so, uh, I'm just finished. Um, some company says that how oh, Gustavo must be very busy in the pharmaceutical area with infringement cases. Apparently there are a number of patent infringement cases in Brazil in the pharmaceutical area. There are not. I mean, we have pharmaceutical patents since 1996. Before that, we had no patents, no pharmaceutical patents for products and processes, okay? And since then, 1996, we have only 38 lawsuits, all of them in Sao Paulo, all of them handled by our firm. And of those 38, 30, 30 are very specific type of lawsuits, they are against distributors to galenic or compound pharmacists. It's a very specific situation, maybe unique to Brazil, and uh, related in general to lifestyle drugs, so I wouldn't even count these as real patent infringement lawsuits. The real patent infringements are only eight against local laboratories, I mean Brazilian uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies, all of them relating to formulation patents, uh, almost all of them, the discussion is infringement by equivalence because the defendant changed the formulation of the drug and all, all of them still under the technical examination phase. Uh, so my, my take from this is that at least pharmaceutical patents in Brazil tend to be respected. It's very difficult to see a situation where a drug is launched at risk. Uh, I mean, when there is a patent, sometimes even a patent pending, and even though someone launches the, 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 the drug and faces the possibility of receiving a, a preliminary injunction against them or even paying damages in the future. Uh, I have my uh, last slide on this. So recent cases uh, relating patents in Brazil, second medical uh, inventions, there used to be a discussion whether these sort of inventions were really patentable in Brazil. Of course, the industry of the copy always, always uh, try to, to present these arguments that second medical use inventions lack uh, novelty. But the fact is, in 2014, the, the Federal Appeal Court in Rio de Janeiro uh, handed down a case confirming the possibility, the notional 
possibility of, of, of patents for, fat co for second medical uses. Uh, there are, again, the lawsuits against some visa in general are very successful in terms that uh, basically barring on visa to perform substantive uh, patent examination uh, to pharmaceutical patents. There, are, there is no data exclusivity for pharmaceuticals in Brazil. Uh, a number, around 10 uh, lawsuits were, were filed. We tried it on the basis of Article 39.3 of TRIPS agreements on the concept of unjust enrichment, on the concept of unfair competition, but so far they have not been successful. So data exclusive for pharmaceutical uh, products is not really there. Only for agrochemicals and for veterinarian products. There is a specific law for that. No linkage in pharmaceuticals uh, in Brazil. Uh, again, three uh, lawsuits were attempted, but uh, so far without success. And no decision on compulsory license. Why is that? Because there are no compulsory licenses in Brazil, only one for uh, the Favirian's drug 10 years ago, and uh, it was a compulsory license requested and granted to the Brazilian government. So instead of buying from the patentee, they can buy from anyone. And apparently, it has been a bad experience. The idea was to manufacture locally the products, and uh, this has not been possible. That's what I'm told. And uh, it seems that uh, the Brazilian government will really be reluctant in, uh, in addressing this issue and, and uh, handing down and uh, uh, compulsory licensing another patent in the, in, the, in the next few years. So those are, I will skip my parts of, uh, about PDPs in, on, the, on the benefit of time. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And I will be happy to, have, uh, to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, that was the first non-Indian presentation, and we are coming now to an Australian presentation by uh, Richard Baddeley or Baddeley.